Because today is Father's Day, I'd like to dedicate this video to my late father and my late grandfather. While these men are no longer with us, I do share memories with them. And considering that today's topic is actually about fatherhood, interestingly enough, I figured that I would give a shout out to both of my father figures, as well as to wish you a happy Father's Day. Alright, without further ado, on to the video. Sekata Sanshiro Sekata Sanshiro Sekata Sanshiro Sekata Sanshiro Oh So despite me being a huge hardcore Sega. nerd I do not have the same kind of intimate feelings and nostalgia and memories as I do with the Sega Saturn. Unlike Sega Lord X, I never really grew up playing the Sega Saturn. When I got my first game console, it was a hand-me-down from my cousins because they got a Nintendo 64. And my first games were like Sonic 2, Streets of Rage 1, and I think some kind of football game that I wasn't really all that into. So you can imagine, I just really wasn't all that into like the Sega Saturn because I wasn't even exposed to it. I didn't even know what the Sega Saturn was until like at least the mid 2000s. If you have any recommendations for me to try out the Sega Saturn, let me know in the comments below. I'll give them a look. Anyway, fast forward like many years later where emulation finally decided to be nice to me, I did get a chance to play some Sega Saturn games. Night into dreams. Oh my goodness, it's like a dream come true. Yeah, that worked. Yay! Oh, she's adorable. Oh, okay. Oh, what? Oh. Um. Uh, what? What the fuck just happened? Yay! It's like a psychedelic queer dream come true. Oh my god, this is such a happy game. I feel like they got like gate kept this from like all of the coolest people. One thing that I did catch on to, which I am still fascinated with to this day, is Sekata Sanshiro. Sekata Sanshiro, for those who don't know, was a mascot for the Sega Saturn, and he is one of those characters that are very hyperbolic for the sake of selling games and products. This here is Hiroshi Fujioka an inspirational Japanese icon and actor. His roles are quintessential to Japan's pop culture. Like since the 1970s, he's known for playing the role of Takeshi Hongo from Kamen Rider, a superhero series known for its excessive use of practical effects, kind of like Super Sentai, which is called Power Rangers here in North America. By the way, um, Kamen Rider and Super Sentai did a crossover film in 2014 featuring Hiroshi Fujioka himself. That said, Hiroshi Fujioka is 78 years old as of making this video, but he's still acting like he's in his prime. This is because of his outlook on life. When he writes his name, he uses this symbol after the kanji he spells Hiroshi which according to my research means to spread or to expand. In his own words, he says, quote, It is meant to remind me to reconsider myself and what it is that I need to achieve. It shows that I am not yet finished with my tasks and must continue working towards their accomplishment." End quote. This man is so active in the industry that he even recently played the role of Richard Zangan from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the PlayStation 5 that was released February of 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that recent. Anyway, this actor is also known for playing the role of Sekita Sanshiro, a ridiculously overpowered karate master 
whose sole purpose is to promote the Sega Saturn. All of his commercials are known for being way over the top and outright violent at times. Although, if you're already like a fan of the tokusatsu subgenre of Japanese cinematography, you probably signed up for something like that anyway. I also wanted to point out that Sekita Sanshiro fittingly battled Sonic the Hedgehog in the comics. Although Sonic won, Sekita Sanshiro honored his defeat and paid respect to the Blue Blur, which was reciprocated by Sonic himself. But what about those commercials? They have to be worth watching if they are featuring such an acclaimed actor, right? And I figured today we would go over some of the old classic Zegata Sanjiro clips and commercials. Also, just for a little bit of fun, I'm gonna be using the Sonic Adventure 2 grading system. Because why not? Let's do that. <laughs> Yeah, you don't fuck with him. Wow, dude. Can you imagine, like, just getting jumped for not playing Sonic R? Can you imagine, like, some fucking adult grown man just like approaching you and bullying you for not going super sonic racing <laughs> this nightclub scene kind of reminds me of that dreamcast commercial where they're all up in the club and sonic is like scratching records and stuff man stay off the light speed my bad. I really like that one, and that's what this one reminds me of. I don't know though, the thing about like Segato Sanshiro is that would he be somebody that you would actually want to hang around with? Like, probably not. Either you would encounter him out in the wild and you'd get like assaulted by him or you'd be his friend and he'd like push everyone that you try to befriend away from you and everyone would be like too afraid to be your friend because your friends was like Sekata Sanshiro here. Sekata Sanshiro. Sekata Sanshiro. Also, I never really played Shining Force 3 or any of the Shining Force games, but I did watch my friend Ron the Anarchist, who is another YouTuber that I'm really good friends with, play the one on the Sega Genesis. Okay, that was really cool. Sekata Sanshiro will just like completely throw somebody, but on top of that, like, have that person explode. <laughs> That's wild, dude. That's some anime shit right there, dog. You better not shout, you better not cry. Get a Sega Saturn, I'm telling you why. Sega Sanshiro will fucking kill you. Sega Saturn shoot! Sega Sanshiro kara no present. Sanshiro disc mo tsuite iru. Sega Saturn! Sega Sanshiro is fucking ruthless. Also, where the hell are the parents, dog? Oh my god. Listen, I'm passionate about Sega as much as the next person, but like, Maybe we shouldn't be like being violent in the name of the Sega brand. They were union busting. The unionized workers did, you know, win and they got the contract that they agreed to. I don't think I simp for Sega that hard, y'all. <laughs> 
He's like fucking carrying a large ass Sega Saturn. What's he gonna do here? What the? Whoa! Holy shit! Were those like Sega Saturns that he just like snapped? I don't know what those were. No, they, those are not Sega Saturns. But he like broke them all with his fucking head. I mean, that's not unusual considering, you know, martial artists. I've seen that happen before. But like, that's a lot. And I almost thought those were Sega Saturns for a second, but they're like too thin to be Sega Saturns. <laughs> Needless to say, I mean, that's still pretty badass. I don't know exactly what he was trying to do here, just like put on some kind of performance with a mask. I thought that was a cool looking mask, but hey, you know, whatever, it's gonna sell the games. Yeah, here in North America, the Sega Saturn was known for not selling very well, but the Saturn outsold the Nintendo 64 in Japan. Check this out, the Sega Saturn sold 5.75 million units, surpassing even that of the Sega Mega Drive sales, which for those North American viewers, uh, the Sega Mega Drive in Japan is Sega Genesis here, which they sold only 3.58 million units in Japan. Meanwhile, the Nintendo 64 sold 5.54 million units. That's still impressive, don't get me wrong, but consider the legacy the Sega Saturn left behind here in North America. This speaks volumes, saying that while Sega was definitely and undeniably on the decline back in the mid-90s, it was still doing quite well. I mean, look at the sales numbers of the PlayStation 1 in Japan upon its first year. It sold 100,000 units on its first day, and by the end of 1994, it only sold 300,000 units. To be fair, the PlayStation 1 was released in December of 1994, which means they only had a month to make those sales, while the Sega Saturn was released a month prior. But upon first day of the release of the Sega Saturn, it sold 200,000 units, doubling the sales of the PlayStation 1 upon its first day. While in the span of two months, the Sega Saturn sold half a million by the end of 1994, which dwarfs the measly 300,000 that the PlayStation 1 did. It is also important to acknowledge that with the underground gaming community, most people in North America prefer to import the Sega Saturn games from Japan, as Japan definitely had a more expansive and admittedly far better library of games to choose from than we did here in North America, which also plays a key role into the contrast of sales between the two regions. But now considering all of the information I just dumped onto you, and now consider the fact that Japan had an overpowered karate master as the mascot of the Sega Saturn, it begins to make sense, and you've essentially consolidated a mark on Sega's legacy in Japan that differs greatly than that of North America. So yeah, Sega Tassanshiro was definitely a huge contributor as to how well the Sega Saturn sold in Japan. I can't imagine like how cold like Sega Tessenshiro's feet are from like just stomping on the ice like that. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> That's brutal. Like you gotta think about it too, right? It's that Sega Tessenshiro is able to make actual human beings explode by just chucking them across the field. He can't seem to walk on ice for some weird reason. He's like superhuman, except for when it's important to be superhuman in some way. 
You gotta think about it too, right? Like, up till this point, Sekito Sanshiro has been like assaulting people, confronting people, making people explode, competing with people. He hasn't really been like a superhero up till this point. Now he's like rescuing people from burning buildings. Wow, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why do you even have a baseball bat in the first place if you're gonna fucking just kick it? Now he's just fucking getting it on his chest. Like, dude, why? <laughs> like, why? What's he gonna do with the zombies? Just fight them all, they're all gonna come back up. That's like the whole point of like undeadness. Oh my god, is he gonna get like devoured by the zombies? Is he gonna become a zombie himself? Can you imagine like a zombie Sekata Sanshiro? Oh my god, there's like a thousand Sekata Sanshiros. Okay, so Dragon Force is one of those games I did play one time. And just before you go to the comment section and ask, no, it is not where the power metal band Dragon Force got its name. I looked it up, and apparently they were originally going to call themselves Dragon Heart, but then changed it when they realized that there was another power metal band that was also going by the same name. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, that's cheating. You can't do that. Unless, like, there's a cheat code. Well, imagine if they, like, programmed a cheat code in that Sega Saturn game where you could do that. Here's a variation of it where he throws somebody. What the shit, dog? Can you imagine? You're just like sitting in like the dugout or whatever the football slash soccer equivalent of that is, and then Sega Sanshiro just comes up to you, picks you up, and catapults you into the field, and you hit your head, and like you strike a goal that way. <laughs> Okay, I like this one. It's very pink. I think this one is for Soccer Wars because I know that's on Sega Saturn. I really, really like this. I also think it's like a really good juxtaposition from like everything else we've seen so far. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing to her, Sega Tatsanjiro? No, get away from her! I do like seeing the gameplay footage of Soccer Wars in the commercial. It is nice to see that. But I also like seeing the overabundance of like tint pink in it. Bro, like find a bedroom. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that's gotta be like foul. Oh my god, um, we're gonna see fish guts here? Oh my god. <laughs> 
<laughs> what is this game? What game is this shit? <laughs> I, no, like seriously, what the fuck is this game? I, this is the first time where I like saw the Sega Tile Tenshiro like commercial and I thought like the gameplay was weirder than whatever the fuck Sega Tile Tenshiro was doing in the commercial. <laughs> Segata, game chart. Who is that girl just like kissing him? It kind of reminds me of that anime called Decadence. It's a really good anime. I highly recommend it if you haven't watched it. Okay, hold on. It says like watching, watching rotor. I don't know German very well at all, even though like my ancestry is like mostly German. The fact that I don't know is almost intentional. I'm gonna keep it that way. <laughs> this is like an executive board meeting, and this evil villain person launches a rocket towards this building like almost like 9-11 in a way and so Segata Sanshiro is just like on top of the fucking building jumps down you fucking madman is there like nothing that is impossible for you to fucking do bro <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Bro, how the fuck are you in space? You're not supposed to be in space without like proper space suits and shit. Segata Sanshiro wa kimi tachi no kokoro ni shinken yugi. Segata Tan. This man is absolutely off the fucking rails. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Hold on right there, motherfucker. We are not going anywhere until we play this game. We have to at least dip our toe beans in here, or else it would be a huge disservice to the rest of this video. So, yeah, I'm quite curious myself. Did any of you in the comment section know that there was a Sega Sanshiro video game on the Sega Saturn? Let me know below. What do you think is in store for us with this game? What do you think? Do you think it would be like a fighting game given that Sega Sanshiro himself is a karate master and that he does all of these crazy cool acrobatics and shit? Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's actually play and find out for ourselves. Now, full disclosure, I do not speak Japanese, so there is a very obvious language barrier for me when trying to play this game. I figure playing the first option to these menus would probably get me something that the game intended for me to try out, because I don't know what's in here. I don't know what's in store for me. There's an entire wall of text that is explicitly in Japanese that I don't know what the storyline is, although occasionally you get some quotations from Sekita Shanshiro himself, so I presume there is something going on with some kind of lore, but I don't know what that is, and I wouldn't be able to tell you if there was a gun pointed to my head. I stumbled upon a mini game that I was so bad at, even though it is a lot easier than, say, Dance Dance Revolution. It's more like a game of Simon Says, but because I am using an emulator to try this out, I don't have the buttons coordinated to the Sega Saturn, and so therefore, I get all of these wrong, 
and I'm like really failing bad at it. At least with like Dance Dance Revolution, you have some excuse for error because all of the errors that you could make are time sensitive. Whereas here, that is not the case. You have to remember like these inputs and then you have to repeat them. It's literally just a game of memory and I am failing miserably at these. The second option on the list takes you to a screen that says Voice of Sekiro Sanshiro in English, surprisingly. Although the rest of it obviously is not in English. From what I could gather, it's just a soundboard with catchy Sekita Sanshiro lines along with a narrator or something like that. The third option takes you to a menu with Sekita Sanshiro smiling in a field of cherry blossoms and sakuras, basically. But none of these options are selectable, except for the back option for some weird reason, which I kept having the fight with over and over and over again. None of the inputs, even when correcting them, actually ended up working. It always took me back to the previous menu. So, I don't know what this is supposed to be, if this is something that I had to unlock later in the game, but hey, that's what the language barrier prevents me from knowing. The last option takes you to a scoreboard, to which, I don't know man, I think I'm just really disappointed overall. Maybe I'm missing a really crucial element to what makes this game special, other than the IP of Sekita Sanshiro being used on the cover. I guess I was expecting like a fighting game. Can you imagine if like Capcom worked on this game and you could pit Sekita Sanshiro with Sonic the Hedgehog? You could have easily fit Sekita Sanshiro into Sonic the Fighters or something really cool like that. Make a Sonic the Fighters sequel and include Sekita Sanshiro as an unlockable character. That would have been far more fulfilling than this garbage. I do feel bad saying that, but I mean, this is not good. <laughs> Sekita Sanshiro is like a true fucking legend, but this video is not over yet. In 2020, there was a sequel to the series of commercials that were Sekita Sanshiro, although this time it's not called Sekita Sanshiro. We're gonna watch some of these clips, and thankfully these clips have subtitles in them, so at least you can kind of follow along, although the story is not that deep, but it's still worth watching. What I like about this guy already is that he kind of reminds me of a lot of the anime that came out in the last decade where it's all a bunch of pretty boys. <laughs> that part reminds me of this one scene from the movie Kung Pao Enter the Fist. You will know Sega. This is the moment you'll know. That's pretty cool that he has like a Game Gear, like especially calling back to the Game Gear. I think that's a nice detail that they put in there. 3D glasses. Sega Saturn. Oh my god, they have a fucking animation. It's a slideshow, mind you. I think it's really adorable that they put like a backstory for Sekishiro and they have like clips of him with 
his father. It also does kind of remind me in a way of those flashback scenes from the first Shenmue, like when you are playing as Ryu Hazuki and you encounter various parts of the Hazuki residence and you get these flashbacks with his father. This is the cherry tree that they dug the mirror at. This is so wholesome. Now listen. Tighten up your abdomen. Straighten up. Find your center of balance. Yes, like that. Yes, good. What a wholesome, like, flashback that was. It's almost like very similar to that actually then there's this demon whom is saying that sega is out of fashion and he's trying really hard to break the spirit of sega shuro which leads into the next commercial where sega shuro and this demon are fighting in this arena that looks like a makeshift arena this demon has his mask removed and all of a sudden it is revealed that this demon is actually his father. I will say right now, Degata Sanshiro looks like Johnny Cash, like when he got older. What a touching scene, but it's also just so silly because he just keeps saying, Father! 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 Yeah, this really does feel like Kung Pao Enter the Fist, like especially in the way it is edited over and over and over. Chosen one! Probably scripted the same way too. And then Sega Shuro tosses his father into the planet Saturn. Like how Dr. Eggman completely nuked half of the moon in Sonic Adventure 2. Before we end this video, I want to talk about one last thing that I think makes this entire thing beautiful. The sequence of episodes where Segashiro encounters this big reveal with his father is an extremely powerful one, but more importantly, there's something much bigger that this is alluding towards. Remember when I gave that brief biography of Sekata Sanshiro's actor Hiroshi Fujioka? Well, this young man is Maito Fujioka, his son. And it doesn't just stop there either, it actually gets even better. Maito Fujioka is the ambassador of Sega, just like how Sekata Sanshiro was the mascot of the Sega Saturn. And guess what? Maito Fujioka even played the role of Takeshi Hongo in the 2021 film Common Rider Beyond Generations. Here is a picture of his father on the set, literally there to support his son during the making of that movie. That right there is absolutely remarkable and that is the wholesome kind of content that we absolutely needed. Wow, what a really cool way to build a lore for the Sega brand. 
I think that's impressive. I think that's very cool. I had a lot of fun reviewing this and talking about this with you guys. I love just like how campy all of these like commercials are like really really just campy and silly almost like very low budget even though it, these were made by like sega who were all competing with nintendo at the time please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you like this video and want to see more of the crazy stuff that i do on the channel follow me and subscribe to the channel anyway have a good one y'all until next time